Hi, I am Chinmay and I'm a doc writer for Simulink. In this video, you will learn how to create events in the schedule editor and use those events to schedule an engine control system with periodic and aperiodic functionalities. Let's start by taking a look at the model. This is a model of an engine speed control system for a vehicle. The top level components are system inputs to exercise the system, software composition, which is a digital controller intended to deploy on an engine control unit with a runtime environment, RTE services that emulates services provided by engine control unit, a simplified representation of a gasoline engine, and crank dual hall sensor which emulates redundant sensors. In this model, we already use an event in the RTE services block. An event is a construct that represents an action, transition, or a condition. Events can use blocks that detect important conditions to schedule the execution of the partition when the condition occurs. The RTE services block simulates the logic to determine when the check for recovery subsystem in the digital controller should be triggered. This is done by broadcasting the event check for recovery from the state flowchart. Let's use the schedule editor to see how this event is bound to the aperiodic component check for recovery. You can open the schedule editor from the modeling tab on the tool strip. The schedule editor shows you partitioned components of the model. Schedule editor has two types of partitions, periodic and aperiodic. Both these are user-defined partitions created from the atomic subsystems and model blocks. Periodic partitions are executed based on their sample time and aperiodic partitions are executed through events and hit times. The arrows show how these partitions communicate with each other. The order table shows the execution order of these partitions. And the events panel shows you the existing events and also lets you create new ones. For example, check for recovery event is bound to the aperiodic partition composition check for recovery and acts as a trigger for the execution of this aperiodic partition. In the events panel, we create an event and name it trick crank B. We bind the created event to the aperiodic partition. Simply drag and drop it on top of the partition. Binding an event to a partition means that when that event is sent, the partition is triggered to execute. We use the state flow chart as a broadcaster to send the trick crank B event. The logic that we want to use to trigger the event is present in the crank hall dual sensor block. This block models two sensors using hit crossing blocks that generate a function call based on the rotation of the engine. We use the trick crank B event to represent when sensor B detects a tooth. We add a send trick crank B event to the state flow chart in the sensor B block. The send keyword is the bridge between the logic in your simulating model and the schedule editor. With that done, we update the diagram and return to the schedule editor. As you can see here, the event trick crank B now shows where in the model it is being broadcast. As it is currently modeled, partitions composition compute RPM A and compute RPM B have lower priority than the other controller partitions so they will always wait for the controller to run. Since the partitions compute RPM A and B are time sensitive, we want their priority to be the highest. Therefore, we want them to execute immediately once their respective events are broadcast. We can easily fix this. We drag and drop the compute RPM A and B partitions at the top. This ensures that the RPM partitions preempt the controller. Let's simulate the model and view the results in Simulation Data Inspector. We can see here that as the controller is turned on, the engine RPM increases. Once the failure of both sensors have been injected, the controller shuts down and the RPM goes down to zero. Then we simulate the recovery of the sensor and once the controller is switched on, the RPM increases again. There you go. We have successfully scheduled the system. By creating events in the schedule editor, binding them to the partitions, and broadcasting these events from the model, we can control the execution of the aperiodic functionality. 
you can easily control the schedule without having to route function call wires and without moving subsystems and blocks around. Now you can go ahead and give this a try. Thank you.